Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopists. In this tutorial and the next few tutorials, I'm going to talk about some of the parameters that we need to define as part of our deep learning model. So in this uh, video, I'm going to talk about activation function, which you define as part of your model, right? When you're defining your model, uh, if you're using sequential method, you can actually add your convolutional layers and uh, dense layers and so on. And part of this is activation, okay? In this example, I'm showing you ReLU activation and then sigmoid acti activation. So uh, let me just talk about what activation is. And again, this tutorial is not about which one is appropriate for what application. Again, this is uh, there's a lot of research that's being done in that field, but I'm going to talk about what it actually means, okay? And what choices do, uh, do you have and do you typically see out there? Okay, so first of all, think of your artificial neuron, right? Again, this is our artificial neuron. A neuron, just like our biological neuron, it gets a bunch of signals and then it outputs a signal, right? Or it says, okay, shall I output a signal or not, right? So it makes a decision. So in this case, this is a uh, our artificial neuron and a, a whole bunch of inputs, yeah? Input uh, that's coming from your, for example, training data is going in and then a bunch of weights are multiplied to these inputs and then you add biases right so weighted sum of inputs is calculated here again your inputs whether it is pixel values or whatever that input values are they're multiplied by weights and the whole point of the training this artificial neural network is by adjusting the weights and biases to actually find the appropriate uh, values that represent the the uh, the training data Okay, and hopefully that will work on your non-training data, which is what we call the generalizing this machine learning model to solve other problems. Okay, so this is the sum of the weighted, uh, uh, you know, or multiply your weights to the inputs and then add them, and then you add bias values. Okay, so this is also calculated during the training process. Now a decision needs to be made by this neuron. Okay, shall I activate this or not? That's where the activation function comes into the picture. So the activation function uh, is used to decide whether to fire the neuron or not, or whether to make this uh, active or not. In other words, is my output equals to one or zero? One if it is activated, zero if it's not activated, right? So is this a cat or a dog? If the, all the information is pointing towards this being a dog, then my Y will be one. If it's uh, being a cat, then my value will be zero. Now I'm explaining a binary problem. And here is an example activation uh, uh, function. So this is just a step function, okay? If you look here, this is just a step function. So anything below certain threshold, I set the threshold as zero, but this is just an arbitrary value on the Y axis. So anything below this threshold is a value of zero. So all cats down here and anything above zero, it's a value of one. So it's a binary state, either zero or one. This is a simple case uh, scenario right here, but that's not the case. If that's the case, then we are done, right? Now, many problems cannot be solved using this single step function, especially think of a problem where you have multi-class, okay? Uh, I know you're trying to read here, so let me go back. I want you to listen to me, okay? So here, it's a dog or a cat. It's a binary problem, either zero or one. What if you have five different animals, okay? Now, is it a dog or a cat or, I don't know, a zebra, a, a giraffe or a tiger? Now you have five. What if it says uh, the activation function comes back and says, hey, it's a value of one for dog, one for uh, uh, giraffe and one for tiger? What do you assign now? Now, how do you say what that neuron is trying to say? So that's why the binary is not always the case. Now, if you actually have, uh, what if the output or the activation function can actually give you a fraction rather than a number like one? For example, it says, okay, it's 0 0.2 giraffe, 0 0.2, uh, let's say some other animal, dog, okay? And then the remaining part of 0 0.6 it's uh, showing up as a tiger. Then you say, oh, okay, it's 60% chance that this is a tiger, so let's assign this neuron to that, or this class to tiger, okay? So that's why you need different activation functions. Now, which one is right for what application? This is where uh, there has been some research out there, and based on that initial, if you look at the, any code on GitHub, go back a decade, well, maybe five years ago, you'll see a lot of sigmoids, okay? 
the quite recent ones, you see a lot of leaky ReLUs or ReLUs, okay? So uh, again, uh, understand for what problems these can be used. And sigmoid is used for models based on my quick look at a whole bunch of these. Uh, uh, it's used for models where we have to predict the probability of an output. Uh, what is the probability of uh, something to happen? What is the probability of this being a tiger? It's 60%, right? So sigmoid is used in that cases. Tan H function is used for classification between two classes, okay? It's for a classification purpose. And ReLU is the most commonly used ones in the convolutional neural networks where you actually have this image uh, classification and uh, even for, uh, uh, you know, uh, semantic uh, segmentations and others, you'll see some of these uh, ReLU activation functions, especially in the uh, uh, convolutional layer uh, part. And uh, leaky ReLU is also, and again, you can see the difference between ReLU and Riku, uh, leaky ReLU, for example, is ReLU is mostly a linear function, okay? It's just linear, as you can see, for all the values above zero. For the values below zero, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, sorry, for all the values below zero, uh, I mean, it's, it's basically zero, right? Uh, for uh, so so again, let's study this. And for leaky ReLU, it's not absolutely zero for the values below zero, but there is some uh, uh, some value, negative value associated to that. And uh, some of these again, uh, the effectiveness of this, you should also look at how the gradient of this actually looks like. Or if you do a first order differential of this straight line, what what is it? It's, it's one single value, right? It's one single value at if the slope is one, then it's one single value of one. So we can get into deep math if you want, uh, again, uh, read other material online, but these are the options that you have. Okay, so in the next tutorial, let me actually cover the next topic of loss functions. So let me end this video here, and then let's talk about loss functions in the next tutorial. Thank you very much for your attention.